from Sky. All right, so now I'm going to talk about Aries based on the sutras of Jaimini. So again, we must remember that Jaimini sutras is the most cryptic uh, form, or like the most cryptic sutra or astrological work out there. It's got a lot of riddles, and like I was saying earlier, he almost kind of makes fun of the names we give for the signs. Um, there, there's just, you know, there's a lot of other texts that are more straightforward, but this, for each of these 12 signs that Jaimini talks about in the beginning of his Upadesa Sutras, he gives just like one line or one or two lines most. So for Aries, he says, five rats and cats. That's it. So everything we're supposed to know about Aries, we're supposed to know from just five rats and cats. Pretty interesting, huh? So i um, got my notes here. I've got a lot of notes on this. And, uh, and also, uh, remember that everything that I covered on Aries from the Brihat Prashra Sutras, that's all still valid. That's all still true and accurate. This is only going to add to it. But this uh, Jaimini Sutras is very possibly the oldest astrological write writing we have. It's very possible that that's the case. So if anything, this is probably more foundational than the Prashra stuff. So um, again, there's a lot of ways you can contemplate five rats and cats, and I appreciate your feedback if you come up with some cool insights. I'm going to share the insights that I've come up with and that I've learned from my teachers that I think are the most accurate, but it's probably still not the whole truth. It's probably just less wrong than other things. <laughs> um, so yeah, five rats and cats. What are we to make of this? Well, five is the number of, see like in numerology, in occult numerology, five is the number of Jupiter, and uh, Jupiter is this number of higher consciousness. And Aries is the sign where the sun is exalted. So it's where we're seeking like the highest level of consciousness and inspiration and ideas. But it's interesting because numerologists uh, and experts, they really don't agree on the number five. And some say that number five is a good number, like perhaps because it's connected to Jupiter. But it's others say it's not a good number. Some say it's a good number. Some say it's an evil number, essentially, or a number that causes difficulties. Five is an odd number, and all the odd numbers are like, they're not even, they're not balanced, so they're crueler, they're tougher, they represent challenges. Aries is all about challenges and overcoming them, so this does make sense. Um, you know, as my teacher explains, like, you know, yeah, like many people think are just really indifferent opinions about the number five. And some saying it's auspicious, others saying it's inauspicious. Well, that's the thing is that it's, if, uh, as he says, it's really the number of seeing, seeing good and evil, like seeing good and evil consciousness and discerning between those. And I think that's the most accurate thing. And that's what Jupiter is. Jupiter is the guru, the one who like gives you guidance and sees the good and evil and moves you around it. Um, also, by the way, Aries rules rocky places, as we cover in Prashra, so that's what we want to do it in this rocky place. And we're on the bank of the Ganges, actually. And I'm wearing red because Aries rules uh, the color red, as I explained in the previous one. Um, so, yeah, the that's the thing is, like, in nakshatras, the fifth nakshatra, or the occult meaning of number five in Sanskrit and nakshatra theory is uh, pratyak or pratvara, and it means like uh, kind of like averted, like always being on, like a, it, it describes like these spokes of a wheel. And if you're on this wheel, the pratyak one is that one. No matter how close you try to get to it, it's always going away. So again, it has to do with what you need to avert, what you need to get away from. And that's really what a guru is, is one who not necessarily tells you what to do, but tells you what not to do. You know and that's almost even more important um, like when you go to an ashram like one of these ashrams or the Kriya Yoga ashram which is literally right up there um, it's not so much even what you're doing it's what you're not doing you're not doing all this other stuff that makes you get in your own way right so this is the number five and number five is really a number I think one of the keywords for the number five is advancement 
It's the number of advancement in life. It's the number of creative intelligence, creative intelligence growing and advancing. <clears throat> I would also add that the number five is the number of initiation. Like the fifth house is the house of initiations. Uh, getting initiated into a tradition, your fifth house gets activated. It's the number of your education. So Aries is about this kind of like this whole thing, this whole process of initiating, getting higher and higher knowledge. Uh, the rats or the cats, it kind of symbolizes the higher or lower knowledge, you see? Um, you know, so Aries is meant to be very creative. Um, it's that higher type of creative intelligence of the mind, and that's why the sun is exalted in Aries. It's the sign of the head, you know, in terms of body parts. Taurus is the face, Aries is the head, the brain, the, high, the ideas. Um, and if you think about the fifth house as being creativity, well, the fifth is the third from the third. So the third house, like we've learned, is the house of Upadesha, like basic instructions, learning skills, learning your ABCs. The fifth, house, the fifth is the third from the third, so it's when you take the ABCs, take your ability to make sentences, and now you go and write poetry. Now you go and write a book with it. That's the fifth house, the full flourishing of your creative intelligence. So, um, yeah, Aries is all about developing an inspired mind, essentially, and going off the inspired, noble, higher self, the cats, and not the rats and leaving the rats alone but Aries is the choice Aries is the has the possibility of either becoming five rats or becoming five cats you see um, so that's really one of the bottom line things to write down in your notes Aries is all about developing an inspired not a mind it's all about the new ideas the inspiration to pursue new and higher concepts and inspirations that come from God and the higher self the Sun which is exalted there so uh, the rats and the cats like so yeah rats this is really interesting because rats are symbols of uh, overly scrutinizing things rats are uh, the word for rat that they use in the text is uh, the same root that makes the word thief so there's this connection between rats and thieves the same Sanskrit root is used for both of them and that's because rats steal everything you know um, so rats symbolize stealing they symbolize overly scrutinizing things overly paying attention to details uh, little things small stuff um, Aries is can get really caught up on that but it's actually not meant to do that Aries is not meant to sweat the small stuff in life you know as the saying goes don't sweat the small stuff that's one of the mottos that Aries needs to keep um, a mouse or a rat is very keen, you know, like if you just leave out a few breadcrumbs at night, the mouse will find a way to break in and eat those, you know, so Aries can use its willpower to be petty and uh, really small minded like that if it's afflicted or if it's not healthy and it needs to not be like that. Um, so that's just one of the main symbolisms that I think makes a lot of sense for this sutra with the five rats. So five rats means advancing in a rat-like way, like a petty, selfish kind of way, um, a thief-like way. It symbolizes the lower side of Aries. And that's the thing is afflicted Aries can make one very petty, very nitpicky, and overly focused on meaningless details that don't matter. Um, so if you have an afflicted Aries, you really need to do some self-reflection on that and think about that. Am I being like that, you know? Um, Afflicted Aries is going to make one want to sweat the small stuff in life that doesn't matter. And it makes one forget the wisdom to just focus on the big picture of life, which is the goal of Aries. You know, Aries is about hearing the call to adventure in your life and taking the call, you know. If afflicted, Aries can't hear the call to adventure because it's too narrowly focused on little details that don't matter or it's too insistent on its own vision or idea or concepts which are actually holding it back or maybe are incorrect or untrue. Aries is a big sign of our intelligence and our cognizance, our fire. Fire is intelligence, so it's a fire sign. It's, a, it's the sign of our concepts that we're holding. So afflicted Aries may hold concepts which are not inspired uh, but are very selfish or are just incorrect. and. Um, you know like or they're just coming from an egocentric place or not a place of true inspiration okay so that's the rat side 
Now let's think about the cat side. 